European stocks are all in the red on Thursday after the Bank of England said it would purchase bonds to steady its financial markets and prop up the plummeting British pound. The sterling has stooped to record lows against the US dollar in recent days. Global markets saw another volatile trading day on Wednesday, with stocks trading sharply lower as global markets sold off on economic concerns surrounding inflation and the growth outlook. Market turmoil continued uh, to hit the UK, prompting the Bank of England to suspend a planned start of its guild selling next week and essentially begin temporarily buying long-dated bonds to calm the markets, a chaos unleashed by the new government's so-called mini-budget. For more on this now, Hantan is now joining us from Abu Dhabi. He is the chief market analyst at Exinity Group. And many thanks for being with us today. So can you just first of all explain what's the situation in the UK? What is the Bank of England doing exactly? And why do we suddenly have all this instability in the guild market? Indeed. Well, so the Bank of England is uh, easing some of the uh, selling pressures on the gills that it had intended to, uh, uh, to put it in uh, perhaps more broader terms. Uh, the Bank of England is trying to intervene to make sure that there isn't this all-out route in the bond markets, which is central to the financial system. But I think ultimately it all um, feeds upon growing fears about the credibility on the uh, UK government's uh, recent tax cuts, uh, specifically how it, it uh, you know, uh, how it could actually fund it, if it even can. I think those details or the lack of those details are really stoking these fears that we're seeing manifested in not just stocks, but uh, the bond market and also, as you mentioned, the pound as well. Just saying, Hannah, I really want to ask you this because some investors in, in the last few days went as far as saying that markets now treat UK bonds as Italian or Greek debt. I mean, is this too far-fetched in your opinion? Right. Uh, well, I think, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I'm not willing to go that far yet, but I can see where that narrative is drawn for, from. So, in a sense that 10-year uh, uh, yields are above 4%, uh, and also the volatility that we've seen, uh, and those steep declines, or at least the wild swings in the pound, it's behaving less like a developed economy and more like an emerging uh, market, right? But I think, having said that, there is a big differentiator here, uh, that being the Bank of England's display or willingness and speed in intervening in its bond markets compared to, say, the European Central Bank, which has to jump through a lot more political hoops, so to speak, uh, when it comes to uh, steadying its own bond market. So uh, while that backstop you know, has proved uh, fleeting, at least uh, judging by what we're seeing right now, but I think that uh, could be relied on for further support, at least for the bond markets. Interesting. Uh, this last point. And, and as well, analysts say that uh, inflation in the UK would have to come down in a pretty quick order uh, for the situation to really improve. Uh, what's your outlook on inflation in the UK? Right. So uh, I think the outlook is muddy because of what we have learned out of the UK government, right? It seems to be greatly at odds with the demand destruction that the Bank of England intends uh, with its rate hikes. Well, on the flip side, you've got this new administration that is trying to shore up demand, and that could uh, ultimately continue fanning those inflationary pressures. Now, to be fair, there have been some measures in place to cap energy prices, so that could cap the headline inflation number, the CPI, for the uh, months ahead. But I think overall, there is this huge dilemma, this huge battle between the monetary and the fiscal side. And until we see a meaningful resolution to that and a positive resolution in terms of the inflation outlook, I think uh, overall there should be more fear manifested in UK markets. Oh, you're right. So expansion on the fiscal front, but tightening on the monetary front is so difficult to handle. Hantan, many thanks for the update.